Alrighty. <clears throat> so <laughs> I got I got the title for this about a month ago. And I had no idea what it actually was supposed to be about until uh, Wednesday. <laughs> so yeah, it's great. Um, the title the title uh, I was given was Speak Life. Speak Life. Um, and, and how we as followers of the way of Yeshua are called to speak life. Um, there are about 3,000 verses in the Bible talk specifically about words, mouth, tongue, lips, say, and speak. So it's obviously something we're supposed to pay attention to. Um, it's something that he brings up quite often and, and wants us to, to take heed of. And it's something that we can live out every day. We all have to, well, I hope we have to interact with people, and that involves talking every day. It's a good thing to be around people and <laughs> speak to people. Isolation doesn't, doesn't do a soul much good. Um, so what is speaking life? Well, um, there's incredibly, incredible power in the, speak, in the spoken word and what we can do with words. Um, this is demonstrated right off the bat in Genesis 1-3 when the Lord speaks and says, Let there be light, and there was light. He speaks it into existence. Um, it's it's power of creation. Um, it's also got the power of destruction, power over life and death. Um, Proverbs eighteen twenty one. It says, "Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit." So we quite literally have the power over life and death. And and what exactly is is life and death and and speaking that into people. Um, you know, it's it's really the power to lead people to Christ and the power to lead people away from Christ. Um, Proverbs 12.6 says, The words of the wicked lie in wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright will deliver them. The words of the wicked wait for blood. Blood is the life of a body. We know this as we're commanded not to eat it, etc. And if, we ha- if the wicked are waiting and lying in wait for life. What are they what are they waiting for? They're waiting to steal and take. And this is evident in uh in the enemy. Um in Revelation thirteen five, the Antichrist, we see that his greatest power is to speak blasphemies and of himself and to lead people away with his tongue. He's literally taught to he's given that power of of using his words to steal. Um Psalm 34:13 says, "Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit." And it kind of gets into the commands that we have around what we're to do. We're supposed to keep ourselves from evil. Well, what what exactly is evil when it comes to speaking, and and how does that play a role in in how we're supposed to keep that command? Um, well, we can see in the Tower of Babel something incredible. We have in the Tower of Babel a moment where God says, and let me just pull up the story so I see, I don't want to butcher his words, so we're talking about the power of words. <coughs> so Genesis eleven six said, the Lord said, behold, they are one people and they all have the same language. And this is what they began to do and now nothing which they purpose to do will be impossible for them. So we see a demonstration of when we speak and when we're united, there is nothing that is impossible through the power of tongue and through the power of that. But in this instance, man chose to try and achieve God. He chose to try and reach the heavens with a tower. And in that moment, he chose to scatter us and to break the language which we spoke so that no one was speaking in unison. And so we have the separation of languages at that moment. And so the power of unity in tongue was lost. And that kind of gets into, um, you know, the gift of speaking in tongues. When we speak in tongues, we're speaking a God's unified language. Mm-hmm. We're getting back to that original place where we're supposed to be speaking with the Lord and also something that all people will come to understand through interpretation and, and through the Holy Spirit. So getting back to the roots away from what happened at the Tower of Babel and back to what, what we're meant to be doing and getting back to that 
awe-inspiring power in which nothing is impossible. So how do we prioritize that in day-to-day life outside of speaking in tongues? Because it's not always something that's needed or necessary. Uh, if we go to Mark 11, 32, ooh, 23. If you're following with me. And Jesus looking around, well, no, that's 10, 32, my bad. Apologies. 10, 23. Uh, 11, Jesus says, Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he is going what he says is going to happen, it will be granted him. So we have day to day challenges that are given to us by the Lord. We have tests, we have things that come in our way, and we have the enemy that approaches us and tries to lead us astray. Well, he says, Speak to it. Speak to it and believe that I have already done this, and you will be taken care of and you, by your faith, will move the mountain. And that's, that's something that we're called to do every day, right? Because we all have challenges every day. And he says, speak to those, and they will be moved if you have faith. Um, and then when we get into speaking evangelism, when we speak to others and, and try to lead, it actually um, is directed in James that we have to watch our words. He says, if anyone thinks himself to be religious and yet does not bridle, which means to curb or to hold the tongue, his tongue but deceives his own heart, this man's religion is worthless. If we don't check our words and only speak what is necessary to a situation, we discredit ourselves and we discredit our religion. And who's gonna listen to us if we're speaking good news but yet the next moment we're speaking something worthless? In regards to that worthless speak, if we go to Matthew 12, 36. I know I'm jumping around a lot, guys. But <laughs> yeah. So Matthew 12, 36 through 37. Jesus says, But I tell you that every careless word that people speak, they shall give an accounting for it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. You know, he doesn't stop paying attention to our words just because we do awesome works. He doesn't stop paying attention to our words just because, you know, we live righteously. We don't, you know. Um, He pays attention to that. He hears everything, and he wants to know, why did you say everything? Because I I need to know the purpose behind it. And we have to give an accounting for that. So by that, you know, this is something that is greatly important to our Lord. It's something that we need to pay attention to. Speaking only, only life, only good things that have a need for the situation. Um, this delights him. Proverbs sixteen thirteen says, Righteous lips are the delight of kings, and he who speaks right is loved. So we do this, and, and not only do we just we justify ourselves, but we are loved. We enhance that loving relationship. We come into closer relationship with him because we experience that loving relationship. Well, <coughs> so it's, it's all great that we're commanded to and whatnot, but we also have to, have to know how to, have to know what we're, what we're doing. I mean, we have a wonderful book in which a lot is said. <laughs> There's a lot that's said. <laughs> and it is a fantastic example, but sometimes it doesn't have everything that applies to our, ins- our situation and, and what we're going through in the moment. And so we need to learn how to speak. And Isaiah 50 puts it wonderfully, at least to my word, to my mind, when he says, The Lord God has given me the tongue of disciples that I may know how to sustain the weary one with a word. He awakens me morning by morning, and he awakens my ear to listen as a disciple. So he's given the the tongue of a disciple to help the weary, to sustain. um, But the caveat to that is he's awake, he's also awoken to listen. Um, James 1.19 says something very similar. It says... 
This you know, my beloved brethren, but everyone must be quick to hear and then slow to speak and slow to anger. So that hearing needs to come first and we have to, we have to hear the word of God and we have to obey and we have to then hear the spirit speaking in our lives. We have to hear whoever he is using to communicate to us on a daily basis. Um, we don't know where it's going to come from. We just have to pay attention and listen and hear. Um, and, but with that, we also have to pay attention to what we're listening to. Um, in the garden, in Genesis 3, the first thing that Satan does is he questions what God said. Um, so if we go, go to the exact words. Now the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Indeed, has God said, You shall not eat from any, you shall not eat from any tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, From the fruit of the trees of the garden we may eat. And then he continues to question. Well, if he said that, then why did he say you can't touch this one? Well, why? And he twists words. And he uses that against us. He lies to us. And he takes what was given to us freely out of context and takes then what we do as payment. Um, <coughs> again, going back to the Antichrist, he speaks deception and many people will lead him, will follow him and will submit to the mark, et cetera, et cetera, because of the way he speaks. Um, he does works as well, but the first gift is his tongue, his mouth. Um, and then we also have to pay attention to, even if we're listening to scripture, well, is that scripture in context? And during the uh, testing in the 40 days, uh, right after the baptism, the devil does nothing but quote scripture, but he does it out of context, and he uses it to try and twist God's word. So we have to be vigilant in, in how we're interpreting things, and are we interpreting them in the right context, or is someone trying to get us to pay attention to something that isn't there? or to justify themselves. Um, so we have, to, we have to verify everything. We have to go back and read it and understand it for ourselves and then, then proceed. And so um, I'll leave you kind of just with a final piece. And I know this is a short teaching, but it's, it's what I was given today um, of what this should look like. So in Ephesians 4.29, let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word as is good for edification according to the need of the moment so that it will give grace to those who hear it. We're meant to give grace through every word we speak. Um, and this is done by you know, eliminating those unwholesome words, by listening to what has been spoken to us and then using that to speak to others. Um, I recently read somewhere, you learn to lead by being led. And if we apply that here, we learn to speak by hearing. Uh, so that's kind of what I want to leave you guys with. Um, unwholesome there. Um, and the strongs means corrupt, worthless, putrid, unfit for use. It's literally just something that has no place in that. It's, it's a word that does not bring grace. It doesn't bring anything additional. It, simply is there to distract, to tear down, and, and to take away. And so I, I just petition all of us that we pay attention to the words we speak and, and we live that grace that we have an example of in Yeshua. Good message, brother. Thank you. I've been starting to look at, at how the Almighty is moving in things, and so maybe if you haven't seen how the Almighty is moving here today with this spirit um, earlier, uh, Hayes talked about, you know, we have everything, but when it doesn't happen, it's unbelief. And you spoke about the verse where Messiah says, if you, if you speak to the mountain and believe that it will move, then it will move. And... Uh, so that's the dichotomy of belief and unbelief. And in the Torah portion you, you brought out, uh, and the portion that we read was about um, Korah and them 
coming and, and trying to step up and usurp power uh, with words, you know, saying, hey, who are you? And, of course, they didn't necessarily believe that. They just were trying to, <clears throat> you know, come up and take power. Uh, but Moses knew that he was placed in his position, and he believed he was placed in his position. And uh, he does the same thing that Messiah said, right? If you say to this mountain, it will move, then it will move. He wasn't told what to say. You know, the Almighty didn't say, say this and it will happen. He just spoke. He said if, the, if, if something unusual happens and the ground opens up, he could have said if something unusual happens and boulders fall from the sky, it wouldn't have mattered what he said. It was because he believed that it happened. So it's great that you brought this message today about, about believing and um, making sure our words are, are positive and useful. 